Further, what helps is that many times this basis A mu or A nu whatever is a basis of is a set of real functions and this really helps. Although I want atomic orbitals, it will be useful to use real functions and this is where for example, the Cartesian P or D functions are really helpful. So, you do not use for P, Z you are only use pz, px, py and do not use exponential i phi, exponential minus, then it becomes complex. I will tell you why, because then if it is real function, this star it is itself and that introduces several simplifications. So, one of them is the following. So, for example, let me take one type of function, let us say mu, nu, lambda, sigma, just does not matter what is the index. I am not writing 1 by r12, but 1 by r12 is there. So, mu, nu, lambda, sigma, let us say all are real. So, this is 1, this is 2, this is 1, this is 2 in terms of dummy variables. Since all are real, I can do lots of interesting things. I can, I can interchange between mu and lambda. I can interchange between nu and sigma. The result would be equal. So, I can start writing very quickly certain symmetries and I hope you will follow me very quickly. Let me for again sake of, remember when I am writing mu nu lambda sigma, it does not matter. For the sake of uh, brevity, I am not writing 1 by r12, but assume that 1 by r12 is there, okay. So, mu nu lambda sigma very clearly would become lambda nu mu sigma, okay. Mu sigma lambda nu Please remember, this is the lexical order from where I started, mu, nu, lambda, sigma and uh, this can be interchanged depending on how, what these are, does not matter. So, that is equal to lambda, nu, mu, sigma because they are real, remember. And then I can interchange both this as well as this. So, it will become lambda, sigma, mu, nu, right, lambda, sigma, mu, nu. Then I can do another interesting thing. Because of the fact that 1 and 2 are dummy indices, I can independently interchange 1 and 2 on both sides. And that could be done even if they are complex, remember. These are only for real, okay. But even if it is complex, I could write this as nu mu sigma lambda because that will only change dummy variable 1 and 2. I hope you are all, all of you are understanding. Huh? Once I can write this, I can write further prescription for the real functions using the same set. That means interchange now this sigma mu nu lambda, interchange this. So, nu lambda sigma mu, interchange both. So, sigma lambda nu sigma, nu mu, sorry, sigma lambda nu mu. This is when mu, nu, lambda, sigma, each of them is distinct, that is mu not equal to nu, not equal to lambda, not equal to sigma, then you have this what is called the eightfold symmetry, okay. Eightfold symmetry, I understand what you mean by eightfold symmetry. Of course, if mu is equal to nu, some of the symmetries will vanish because there is no point in interchanging mu and nu. For example, this and this is identical in that case. So, it will become fourfold symmetry number of symmetry will reduce depending on the, the uniqueness of the indices. But as long as these four indices are unique, different, you have a maximum of eightfold symmetry and that is the largest number that you have. So, eventually your m to the power 4 is not m to the power 4, it reduces. Like if everything had eightfold symmetry, then it would become m to the power 4 by 8. But that is not true because some of them have fourfold, some of them have twofold. If they are equal, then there is only one number, okay. There is no further reduction. So, now can you tell me what is the actual number of integrals? Assuming they are real functions, so I add to your home assignment for the next Monday, this one, okay. Calculate the total 
Don't, don't worry about zeros. Assuming that is, you don't know about the sparsity. That I'm not asking. Assuming every integral is, you have to do, but the symmetry is what you have to factor. So if I have mu nu lambda sigma, I will not write, like to have lambda nu mu sigma again, because they're equal. I like to have only one of that number. So based on only the symmetry, not the spatial symmetry, based on the integral symmetry. So what is the number of total integrals? So if, so the assignment is the following. So that's again for the home assignment. If this mu basis is a set of real functions, calculate set of uh, basis is a set of m real functions, okay, so m, m dimensional functions, calculate the number of unique integrals. So I hope you understand what is unique integrals. That means something should not be calculated twice if they are equal. Unique integrals. Of course, when I say integrals, it is two electron integrals. So let me clarify and unique two electron integrals in an M basis without taking into account any special symmetry. So you can assume that the molecule is such that it has no other symmetry, it is A1. Many of you have done group theory, it is A1 symmetry, so no further symmetry is there, okay, point group is A1. So no further symmetry should be assumed. Of course, if there is a further symmetry, it will reduce even more. So what is the total number? Obviously, from my discussion, you can make out, I can give you the hint that it should be something to do with m to the power 4 by 8, but it is not. As clearly I told you, because all numbers are, are different, because if all are, all are uniquely different, then it, those numbers have to be divided by 8. Okay? But that will not be m to the power 4 by 8. So what is the actual number? So just, I hope the problem is clear. Based on, only on this two electron symmetry, no further symmetry should be assumed. That is what I mean. So calculate the total number of unique integrals and uh, that will really help. <coughs> then all it depends is of course putting together this code by basically multiplying this with these and so on and so forth. I mean, that's very easy. After that, you know, we'll go to the iterative part and then, of course, how to solve the equation, Fc equal to Sc, how to solve the equal Ruthan equation that I wrote. Now, that is something that we will do. So, let me now write the Ruthan equation once more, F nu mu, C mu y, I hope all of you can write it, sum over mu, epsilon i, sum over mu, S nu mu, C mu y. If you note, this I have to write for every nu and every i, because in this equation, nu and i are specific indices. Mu is a dummy index, one of them is a dummy index. So given a molecular orbital i, given a specific nu atomic orbital, I have written down this equation. And I noted also if this was a Kronecker delta, this would have a structure of eigenvalue equation. So what is the structure of this equation? I already have written to you a matrix S, C. I will now introduce another new matrix called the epsilon matrix or I can, I can still use epsilon or maybe some E eigenvalue matrix, which is simply a diagonal matrix, epsilon, just as I do for epsilon m 0, 0. Remember, although I am interested only in n electron problem, 
when I solve this equation, this is an m by m problem, so I will actually get m orbital energies, just as I get in eigenvalue equation, okay. So it will m, so it is actually an m dimensional matrix. So I construct a new matrix, E matrix, do not confuse this with identity matrix, it is a diagonal matrix containing these eigenvalues or these values, epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and the rest is 0. So it is a diagonal matrix, then this entire matrix can be written for all new i can be written in a matrix form as S C E. So it is a matrix multiplication. Note the same thing we do for eigenvalue equation. I again repeat this. If it was delta mu nu, the eigenvalue equation, note that the same equation, if S nu mu were delta mu nu, what would have been written? This would have been F nu mu c mu i for a specific number would have been epsilon i c nu i. Again for every nu and i. How would you write this equation, eigenvalue equation? You write exactly in the same manner, f c equal to c e. I think in many, many parts we have discussed this. Although when I write it here, the orbital energy can be written anywhere because it is a number. When I write in terms of matrix, this matrix must come right of C matrix, otherwise you will never get these equations because this matrix does not necessarily commute with the C matrix, although it is a diagonal. Many people have a confusion the diagonal matrix always commutes with another square matrix. That is not true. A diagonal matrix commutes with the square matrix provided the diagonal values are all equal. So a degenerate diagonal matrix only commutes with the square matrix. So you have to be very careful and normally you write always FC equal to C, A, A, A C equal to C, whatever, whatever matrix. This is the form of an eigenvalue equation. So precisely if you understand this, you should be able to write this. The same equation you should be able to write except that the S which was an identity matrix has just come in the left of it and this is the format in which you have to write. Again E goes in the bottom and again S and C do not commute. So you have to be very careful in writing this. Again at some point of time we may come back and ask you to derive this from here to here, how, how, how can you write it, you know. These are all, these are all good assignment problem but uh, <coughs> please note this that we can write this FC equal to S in a matrix form and in matrix form when I write, I do not have to write this for all new y. Remember here I have to write for all new y, that is now all contained because when I multiply row times column, all multiplications are contained. Here I am specifically talking about uh, a new th row, ith column and so on, that is all contained here, except that it is not an eigenvalue equation. I know how to solve this, I do not know how to solve this. So because of this guy, yes. So that is another issue that will come to that. But before we come to that, we let me uh, <coughs> recognize that just like if S were delta, I could write FC equal to CE, I, I should be able to write this as FC equal to SC. And if you know how to do this, you should be able to do this. But if you do not know, we will come back. Please practice at home. But can you write this in this form? Write a simple 2 by 2 matrix, expand this, you will see that you will get these equations. So you have actually four equations here, nu equal to 1 to 2, let us say everything is 2, take a 2 by 2. So m is capital M is 2, okay. So you will get everything. Now very clearly when I have a structure of m, now the fact that I was a molecular orbital and I was interested only up to n by 2 molecular orbital, that information is gone because when I solve this equation, I am going to get everything now capital M. The entire dimension would be capital M. So whatever I do, eventually I will get capital M sets of C mu y, capital M sets of C mu y, M square C mu y, M by M. So I will actually get capital M molecular orbital. Is it clear? Eventually when I solve, I will get capital M molecular orbitals because everything is now capital M. Whereas I required only N by 2, which is fine because all the rest of them will become unoccupied orbitals. And I have already given interpretation for unoccupied orbitals, more they did come better they are and they will have a great use later. 
Okay. Although for Hartree-Fock, I will only require n by 2 of them. The result of the solution will give me capital M. Capital M molecular orbital space, which means 2 times capital M spin orbitals. And if I now do full CI, then I will have 2 M C N determinants, right. Uh, when I started with these atomic orbitals A, they are not normalized. Once you normalize, of course, I am going to do that. That is the next thing I will do, how to solve. But you have to remember, after normalizing, you have to get back the chemist picture. Otherwise, those normalized orbitals are, do not belong to any atoms, okay. So, we will do that. That is exactly what uh, we will do. But then we have, to, uh, we have to know how to get back the, the chemistry. Otherwise, the chemist will not be interested, okay. So, that is why that is why we started with an ortho, orthonormal basis, otherwise a non-orthonormal basis, otherwise I could have started with orthonormal basis, okay. In fact, if you do methane calculation with the basis of only carbon atoms, and this is very fascinating, a physicist would love that, then the entire atomic orbitals are orthonormal. And a physicist would argue that if I take a complete set of only carbon atom, I should be able to describe methane molecular orbital. To a chemist, it will be atrocious that you are constructing a methyl molecular orbital CH4 without even having any hydrogen atomic orbitals. <coughs> but tell me what is wrong, there is nothing wrong as far as mathematics is concerned. I could use only carbon atomic orbitals and construct methane molecular or orbitals and they would be orthonormal except <laughs> that number capital M would have been very, very large. To get a meaningful information, you require, you would have required a much larger basis because eventually I have to approximate. So, the approximation works well when I mix. Now, this is where I always say that the chemists have intuition, okay. So, the chemists have intuition, they will do it, but you know their intuition has brought in some problems, again, but mathematicians can solve it. So, you have to take help of mathematics people to solve your problem, messiness that you have created because of your intuition and there will be a solution to this. But yeah, you are right, I mean that lot of physicists say that, you know, take only one atom and expand the entire molecule in, but you see you lose the entire picture and there is no LCAO, there is no understanding of the contribution of atoms in the molecular orbitals, everything that the chemist love to do would vanish. You will only get an energy, but the interpretation is very, very important, remember. So, our interpretation is what uh, we would like, love to do, so that interpretation would not be there, very easy to, unless you do that, okay. So, I hope uh, you please try this at home, I am not giving this as a formal home assignment. The number of integrals I have already discussed, so please do this. Once you do, then you are in a good business, you know, then we can start solving this equation. So, two, there are two parts, how do you solve it? And of course, whichever way you solve it, the iterativeness remains because your F matrix depends on the coefficients, do not forget this. So, we have to do an iterative solution of the hartree fock ruthan equation. And then we have actually solved the molecular problem completely, almost completely, except that I still have to worry about what are these basis functions. You know, right now I have just told you these are the basis function which I have written mu nu lambda. Please remember also that in, in shorthand notation when I am writing mu lambda nu sigma, they are actually a nu a lambda. I hope that is very clear that this, this, these are basically a nu a lambda, you know and so on 1 by r 1 to a mu a sigma in a short, in a, in a long notation this integral. But, but I am using just nu lambda mu c because that is really unimportant now because they are in the basis, yes. How do you have non iterative Because you cannot have because that is a physics, yeah that is a physics. The, the Hartree, we have, we have an iterative solution because your original Hartree Fock equation of the Fock operator came has the field from the other orbit orbitals. If it was not, then of course it would not be variationally optimal. So, that is the first thing that I learned that to have a variationally minimum energy, I require the field of one electron operator of an on an electron must derive from the field of the other orbitals, other, other electrons. So, that is the first thing I have learned 
Now that cannot vanish. Okay? These are all then versions of Hartree form for atoms, numerical, for molecules, expansion of basis. Okay? But the basic spirit will not go. So somewhere that iterative thing will remain. In fact, if you did have vanished, then there is something wrong, physics. How did it vanish? So the dependence on the other orbitals are coming now through the coefficients. Okay? Yeah. All right. 